Hi everyone, I'm João Martins and I'm here to talk about ClickOS, which was worked on by me and my colleagues at NEC, as well as some other people at the University of Bucharest. So the view of the network as taught in schools looks something like this. End systems with a network in between containing switches and routers. Pretty simple. But as we all know, the reality is quite different. Middle boxes are a common place in today's networks, uh, existing as many as switches and routers. They are useful for many reasons. Security, such as firewalls and intrusion detection systems. Monitoring. Traffic shaping. Dealing with adverse exhaustion issues. Performance optimization and others of a more dubious nature, such as this ad, its advertisement insertion box. Obviously, these middle boxes are very useful, but they come with a number of problems. The most clear one is the price. These middle boxes are extremely expensive, both in the price of the box and the cost of managing the box. It's difficult to add new features as we get vendor locked in. Once we buy a Cisco box, for example, we get stuck with them with upgrades and firmware and whatsoever. They are difficult to manage, often requiring specialized personnel to deal with each kind of middle box. Harder middle boxes cannot be scaled on demand, nor that can be shared among different tenants. Finally, it's hard for new players to enter in this harder market. So clearly, moving these middle boxes into software and in, a, in the cloud would certainly solve most of these issues. The question that still remains unanswered is whether they can, we can build these software middle boxes in commodity hardware while still achieving the high performance as seen by the hardware middle boxes. We believe so, and that's what we want to propose to ClickOS. In one sentence, ClickOS is a tiny mini OS based virtual machine that runs Click Modular Router software on top. So, let me talk about Click. Click Modular Router is a network processing framework initially designed for making routers. Its main concept is around processing elements. Users create a configuration specifying connection of these elements. These elements can have parameters parameters which are then exposed uh, as variables in the proc slash profile system or by sockets. For ClickOS, we managed to compile 262 out of 300 available elements in Click. As you can see on, this, on the listing on, that, on the side, you can see the classes of these elements. You can observe the variety of packet processing we can do with it. Furthermore, programmers can write new elements that allow them to extend the runtime. So in the figure in the middle, you can see a configuration that just receives packets from ETH1 interface, decreases the TL and forwards back the packet out. So in this slide, you can see an example uh, of a very simple firewall in click. We received packets from the net front element, going to the IP filter that allows only UDP packets with the source 10.01 and destination 10.01 and packets as much as criteria are forwarded back to net front element, otherwise dropped. So, what is ClickOS then? As we all know, the data is a per uh, uh, in the per virtualized virtual machine has its get as slightly modified guest kernel and applications running on top. In place of ClickOS, we use MiniOS as the guest operating system. It has a single address space, which means no system calls and a cooperative schedule. And on top of MiniOS, we run Click and we call the whole thing ClickOS. So the work we did and many contributions are having a generic build system in order to build these middle uh, to build these ClickOS virtual machines, which are five megabytes in size, and we also use it to be for other purposes. We had to emulate the click control plane for MiniOS, so click is a process or distributed as a kernel module, so the way to communicate um, with it, we had to change it to adapt as a VM. 
doing optimizations to re further reduce boot times. We started with something like one second and going down to 30 milliseconds. And finally, optimizations to the data plane to achieve 10 gigabits time rate for almost all packet sizes. So I will focus on the last item, which we think is has higher contribution for the Zen community. So we started doing a performance analysis into the Zen IO subsystem. Let me just give a quick overview of how it's, it's organized. So first we have a NIC, in our case we use Intel IXB uh, 10 gigabit NICs. Uh, then we have DOM0, which is a network that hosts a network driver for it, their DOM0 or driver domain. Uh, and the network drive and this driver is attached to a software switch, say the Linux switch or OpenV switch in more recent Zen versions. To the switch, you attach a virtual interface called VIF, which is managed by the network driver, by the netback driver. The netback driver connects to a network element over the Zen ring. Event channels are used for notifications in the Zen bus for controlling standardization. Further, we added two new elements from NetFront and to NetFront so that Click can interact with NetFront driver. So our goal is to achieve 10 gigabits, uh, 10 gigabits line rate for all packet sizes, meaning 813,000 packets per second for maximum size packets and all the way up to 14.88 million packets per second for minimum size packets, as the table can show. So the problem is, when we put all this together, there were several uh, issues. For instance, OpenV switch could only forward 300,000 packets per second. When we plug in NetBack and VIF, it was only forwarded uh, 350,000 packets per second. And when we put all of the pipe together with MiniOS NetFront driver, we had only 225,000 packets per second, which, as you can see, is still one fourth of line rate for maximum size packets. So, the main issues with this pipe are the following. The backend switch, uh, Linux Bridge or OpenV switch, are not prepared to handle really high packet rates. But although it's still able to achieve 10 gigabits uh, relying on unique features such as the TSO or DRO. While this, for instance, is good enough, for middle boxes, this is far from ideal where the switch needs to handle million packets per second. Regarding the backend and frontend communication, packets always need to be copied from the guest to the backend domain. This copy between domains are normally done in batches of packets, although it's still one of the main causes for low packet rates. In addition to this copy, NetBack works with the packet metadata data structures such as SKBs or MBUFs in FreeBSD, in which its allocation and manipulation are really expensive. Last but not least, the MinUS NetFront is not as good uh, and functional, uh, is not as fast and futureful as the Linux NetFront. So you saw 255, in Linux we get 430,000 packets per second. And the receive path on MinUS, it's even worse. You are getting 8,000 packets per second. After careful analysis, we started optimizing things up. First, we started to transparently accelerate things without modifying either the guest or the Zenring IO protocol. For this, we started by changing the backend switch to use Vale. I will go to a little bit more in detail, but basically the NIC enter enters a special mode called NetMap mode, where the host that is connected and the packets are sent by the NetMap API. So for this modification, NetBack only required slight modifications and mostly to remove packet metadata manipulation, in which we don't need with the valid switch. We also applied some of the previous uh, optimizations um, uh, into supporting multi-page IO rings, which has let us batch more packets, roughly batching, uh, extending the ring to be represented over multiple pages, which lets us batch 1,000 packets in the ring. We also had to change the front end for this, but the compatibility is still kept if the front end doesn't support multi page rings. So, um, this optimization is already known by the Zen community and I think it's still available, is already available on the block drivers. So, applying all of these changes, the results were actually pretty good. 
they were getting 2.7 improvement for maximum size packets and 4.2 for minimum size packets. So before going forward, let me give you a little bit overview about uh, NetMap and Valley. NetMap, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the Valley switch, um, is a fast packet IO framework that is able to send 1488 million packets per second in one core with 900, 900 MHz. It roughly corresponds to 1665 cycles per packet, and it's currently available at FreeBSD 9 and also on Linux. NetMap requires minimal device driver modifications to work, but what it makes it special, in my opinion, is that the critical resources such as NIC registers, physical addresses, and packet descriptions on the NIC are not exposed in any way to the user space application. The NetMap ring, shown is the, as shows, shown in the figure, is a copy of the NIC ring, which its content is validated by the kernel before pushing packets out. NIC works under a special mode, uh, which is disconnected by the host stack, but this mode change is done in runtime, uh, when the application registers the, uh, uh, an interface. So NetMap is built around this shared memory region that is mapped to user space, uh, which contains pre-allocated packet buffers and a software ring. Packets are sent over LAT batches per system call instead of one per packet, as it normally happens. And now, Vale is, uh, is, was built as, a, as an extension to NetMap, uh, and it, it's built around the same concepts. So the graph on top shows you a comparison of packet forwarding between two 10 gigabit NICs in FreeBSD Bridge and OpenV Switch. Whereas in the Valis case, uh, it's only between two virtual ports. Access to these virtual ports is done with the NetMap API, whereas each virtual port uses a separate memory region. In Valet, the switching fabric is decoupled from the switching logic, which means that the other kernel module can extend the switch to implement their own local functions. The default provided by Valet is a layer 2 learning bridge. So regarding the previous optimizations we did, we changed the underlying switch and removed packet manipulation, but are able to batch more packets with the Zen IO ring. Performance was better, but was still far from ideal. For example, minimum size packets is 1.2 million packets, which is still 10 times uh, lower than what we want. So the next optimization we did was to replace the Zen IO rings with the NetMap uh, with the Valley, uh, Valley uh, with the NetMap ring regarding a Valley port. We basically ended up with a much thinner netback that involved much less processing, delegating most of the packet processing operations into Valley without having to deal with these SKBs. We map all the memory regarding uh, Valley port all the way to the guest. The netmap buffers are also mapped to the guest so that we don't need to do the extra grant copy between domains for packets to arrive at the backend. With the netmap ring, the data structures are not organized by request and response model as we normally see in the Zen ring. This means that the guest, when he sends an IO request, doesn't need to parse an IO response on the way back. So the nationalization mechanisms on our front-end and back-end are somehow similar, and event channels are also used for identification. There are two event channels, one for transmit and one for receive. These event channels on the back-end uh, will handle Will, will be act mainly as a proxy to NetMap operations from and to the guest in Valley. So in the end, we got a really good, imp really major improvement with this um, network backend, but we also break other guest support. But to show that our optimizations do apply to other guests, we also implemented the Linux NetFront compatible with this new backend. So let me speak to you a little bit uh, how the backend and frontend works. So when we do a network attach of an interface to the VM, we do the, uh, what happens is the following. Backend register a new valid port and calculate which pages belong to the ring and grant them to the guest. The resultant grants are then shared to the guest via the Zen store. The netmap buffers uh, that are granted as well uh, are contiguous spaces in guest memory. A page fits two buffers. So after granting the ring, we'll need to take a look to these buffers and grant them as well. Although there are a lot of grants to be shared, so these need to be include, included in the ring instead. The guest on the other side will grab the ring grant references, map them, 
and after that look at each slot on the ring and grants um, and maps the grant reference regarding the buffer for each slot. So the downside of this of uh, of this is basically we have higher memory requirements with this back and front end. So we allow that the the administrator uh, uh, change um, chooses the ring size um, depending on the VM workload. So the table on the side shows how much memory and grants are exchanged between backend and frontend. So we have a minimum 135 kilobytes per ring with 64 slots. And for both rings, we require 66 grants and 200, uh, 270 kilobytes for the minimum uh, ring size. But let me say that um, the default on NetMap is 1024 uh, as a ring size which is actually the one who offers best performance, but at the cost of the bigger chunk of uh, mem shared memory, roughly four megabytes for four rings, for uh, both rings, Rx and Tx. So let me give you uh, also uh, talk a little bit about the synchronization in our backend and frontend. Now, our backend is uh, based on NetMap. And NetMap is made for user uh, uh, process and kernel instead of VM. In a NetMap application, operation is done in the sender thread context, which means that the process wants to send packets and switches to the kernel, the process will not access simultaneously to the ring and change int indexes. Well, in our case, backend and VM uh, ideally, run uh, ideally run on different uh, contexts uh, and different uh, CPUs, virtual CPUs and physical CPUs. So when we want to send a packet, in our case, what, we, what happens is that we fill the ring, we update the cursor on the ring for the next packet to, packet to be filled, and the number of slots available in the ring, and we notify the backend. Meanwhile, backend will process the packets, and when he's finishing processing, he will notify back to the guest, which, we, which means that he finished work and he is idle. When the backend is processing packets, what the guest will do, he will grab a copy of the ring indexes, and update this copy uh, instead of the shared memory region. When the notification comes back, um, he will update the shared memory region accordingly and notify back the backend if there is work to be done. So this way we, we avoid that the front end and back end change simultaneously the same variables on the ring. So as an alternative, we could wait until the backend notifies back with the work done but uh, this turned out to be inefficient. We only, in our case, we only wait when there are no more slots to be used. So I explained to you how uh, we optimize things up. That we'll proceed now to the evaluation. So we first started evaluating the ClickOS uh, VM's performance. So we started by gener uh, doing a TX and RX measurements in. Uh, one of our low-end machines, which has uh, four cores, 3.2 giga, uh, gigahertz. Uh, we have one core per VM, uh, for uh, VM and the remaining cores for DOM0. The y-axis shows you rates in million packets per second and the lines uh, for better readability in gigabits per second. And uh, below are the packet sizes on the x-axis and each bar represents a different ring size. So we can see that on Rx we are able to achieve 9 million packets per second in receiving packets and up to 14.2, which is 95% of line rate on Tx for minimum size packets, which is actually a really good result. And we see that it's a line rate for all the packet sizes. Also, for re ring bigger than 512, we are able to achieve line rate, or always line rate from all the packet sizes, uh, for most of the packet sizes. Next, we proceed after doing experiments just for 10 gigs, we figured how we would scale for multiple NICs in VMs. So the bars in the graph represent VMs just doing, uh, just transmitting packets, and the lines represent the VMs doing uh, forwarding traffic. For this experiment, we manually pinned uh, uh, event channels, affinity, Q, uh, NICs inter Q interrupt affinity, 
to avoid starvation in the hardware, in the VM. Actually, the, the, the setup was quite sensible, as we easily, one of the NICs would uh, not receive any packets. So for this experiment, three cores are reserved for DOM0 and three other cores for VMs assigned in a round-robin fashion. So what we can observe is that for smaller packet sizes, it doesn't scale, scale quite well. But for bigger, quite, uh, bigger packet sizes, we are able to get uh, up to 40 gigs in VM just doing uh, transmit and up to 30 gigabits uh, for VMs forwarding traffic. Just one uh, as a side note, regarding the forwarding rates that are represented on the graph, the lines in the graph correspond to the rates measured at the receiver machine. So these are not the rates in duplex, just to facilitate understanding. I should add that the transmitter in, this exp in the, the forwarding experiment, it's doing line rate for all the cases. So the rate actually corresponds in duplex is a double. Now, uh, this graph uh, shows you the Linux performance, uh, gas performance. The bars represent KVM rates measured with in kernel packet chain, with VertIO backend, and vhost uh, uh, enabled with all the cores pinned, all the, CP, uh, the CPUs pinned. Zen uh, measured as well with in kernel packet chain, and our optimized version of Zen uh, with user space netmap packet chain. Let me point out, you can see that the, the results are uh, really good on, the, on our case, but this experiment is not exactly, uh, it's a bit unfair, because we are not using the host stack on the optimized version, thus bypassing uh, any SKB processing and all of that. But what the graph shows is not, uh, uh, what the graph shows that how fast we can go by using our backend and frontend and a netmap uh, application. Next, is uh, uh, we actually implemented a few middle boxes and checked its it performance. So each, each VM uses one core, uh, one core for the different middle boxes. The, 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 middle, the first middle box is the most simplest one to get the baseline management, which is just receives packets and transmits packets. The Ethernet mirror just simply flips the destination and source MAC addresses. We have a standards compliant IPv4 router, a firewall loaded with 10 rules, almost standards compliant uh, carrier grade net, whereas each packet is assigned with randomized source and destination ports, just to stress it. A BRA, uh, software uh, BRAS, which strips PP, uh, checks for execution session, strips PPOE headers, performs IP lookups, rewrites uh, MAC addresses, a load balancer based on five tuple uh, assigned in a road robby fashion, backs packets with the source MAC address so that the backend switch can split packets based on that field. A flow monitor that keeps performing uh, per, per flow packet counts and rates and an intrusion detection system based on regular expression matching contains a, a single rule that matches the string ABC on the beginning of the packet. So you can see most of these middle boxes are just a proof of concept, but the ones actually more ready for production like, uh, and future for like Carrier Net and Software Beerus, with all that heavy process, that amount of processing can still do really good performance in ClickOS. Next, we measured delay in uh, comparing the other uh, existing approaches. So we use in ClickOS a simple ICMP responder click configuration and all, all the VMs in the test, all the tests where uh, the VMs are idle just to get a baseline reading and an external box just to pings and measured RTT. So we can see that ClickOS matches somehow the, matches almost the delay with DOM0. But comparing, we, and we actually improve by half, uh, we decrease by half the delay in a standard on new. And uh, performing better than KVM as well. Uh, so as main conclusions, I presented you guys uh, ClickOS, which is a tiny virtual machine tailored at network processing. Very small, uh, with five megabytes of size and runs with a minimum of six megabytes of RAM can be booted on demand in 30 milliseconds, can achieve 10 gigabits throughput using just a single core, 
for almost uh, for all the pa almost all packet sizes, and can run can run a wide range of middle boxes with uh, high throughput. As a future work, we are we are uh, starting to invest exploring performance on NUMA systems. We are at the at the moment the performance is not quite good, but since the latest changes in Zen for VNUMA support and NUMA affinity support, they are being pushed uh, pushed mainline. The performance uh, will change for sure. High consolidation of uh, ClickOS VMs in a single server up to running, for example, 1,000 VMs in a single server and doing service chains with these VMs, which means for traffic being forwarded to uh, each of these VMs until being forwarded out to the external world. And so that's it for, all my, for my talk. Hope you guys like it. Thanks. All using the same uh, net map uh, interface. Can each guest see the other uh, packets that are destined to the other guests? So don't you lose some uh, security here, some isolation? Uh, that, that's why we, so you can implement your own lookup. So we, for example, us, uh, we implement static lookup. So for example, a guest can only send packets to that interface. That's, that's for sending, but what about to reading? Because all of the packets, all of the physical NIC buffers are mapped to the guest. No, 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 not the physical NICs, okay. not the physical NICs. Uh, so the physical NICs are attached to the switch. So the guest only sees a virtual port. So it's not, it's not the NIC. The NIC, the NIC buffers are not mapped to the user space. That, that, that's OK, so there is an additional copying to? Um, yes, there is a copy within the switch, but not between the guest and the backend. Okay, right. yes. Each switch port has its own buffer, and the, the switch copies between those different buffers. Right, so it's not completely copyless. No. Other questions? Uh, is the clinic always open sourced or is... Uh, sorry, sorry? Is it open sourced? Uh, that's the, we, we will be open sourcing it uh, in the, either this quarter or in the first part of the next year. Okay. The worst case. We basically took the decision last week to open source it, so we now need to figure out how. <laughs> How much memory are you using in your uh, mini OS based domain? Sorry, sorry? How much memory are you giving to your mini OS based domain? Uh, for 1K ring size, we give 16 megabytes. For example, for 64 ring size, we use 6 megabytes of memory. So during the definition of this project, it was considered to use the, the Mirage OS approach of an appliance and or was it compare against it at some point? Uh, so uh, our focus were, so, so Mirage is a Rocamo, which is focused on type safety. So, on, and we thought that that could be an overhead given that it, it, the packet, process, packet processing needs to be really fast. But uh, as well, ClickOS started like two years and a half ago. So Mirage was not at the stage at this point, but even though it, it, it wouldn't fit, if you know that. Any other questions? Let's give them a hand.